Hey folks, this is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video review of the Ultimate Ears Super 5 5 VI headphones. This video is brought to you by SquareTrade.com for the ultimate iPhone warranty. Go to www.squaretrade.com slash TSIG to save 35 bucks of your two-year warranty. So these are the Logitech Super 5 5VI headphones. Well, they're not actually in here, but this is the video on them. They're right here, and I'm going to get to them in a minute. But what I'd like to talk to you about first is the price point, who they're made by, and then what you can expect in the box. So these are priced at $189.99 US dollars, so they are a bit up there on the scale of consumer line earphones. Um, they also come with this stylish carrying case. Uh, it's a little hard shell case. Works great. There's no cable management system, but you just throw them in there and uh, it prevents tangling. There is this little wax, earwax tool remover they give you, and you can actually stick them into the headphones if you get wax that deeply in the headphones. I can't imagine how far you'd have to jam them in there to actually need this, but it is cool that they give it to you just in case that is an issue. They're also going to give you six pairs of ear tips. They give you four silicone ones, which I'm honestly not a fan of, and then they give you two Comply uh, T400 earbuds, uh, which I quite enjoy. Uh, right now, I've upgraded to the TX400s, but uh, these are the Comply Foam Tips, and they are excellent, but I'll get to the fitting in a minute. Okay, so that's the basis. Ultimate Ears is a division of uh, Logitech. They make tons of in-ear monitors for professional musicians that perform on stage in bands. A lot of the times, they're rocking Ultimate Ears IEMs. So, you know, they're no stranger to the audio market. Now, I'm going to talk about the pros of the headphones, and we'll go over the headphones in general here in the beginning, and then we'll get into deeper stuff. Uh, the look of the headphones is very ergonomic. It fits in your ear canal nicely when it's facing down. Um, it has this foam tip capture, and then if you pull the foam tip off, you can see that is where the open system is. It's open because it gives a better sound. However, there can get dirt and other stuff inside of there, so that's why you use that little earwax remover tool I showed you. You just stick it in and get all that junk out. Um, the right earpiece is very selectively and conveniently labeled in a dark red color and this is so you can see which earphone is which. I actually find just from the shape of the headphones, the ergonomics of the headphones, I can tell immediately which one is which but that is there for those that don't notice that. Now uh, the ear tips as they should just pop on like that. As we go down the cord we will see that there is this little module right here, and this is in fact a microphone. I have some gross adhesive there. Um, this is a microphone. The microphone is actually really pretty good on the device. We'll get into it more in a second. The Ultimate Ears logo is on the other side. As we go down a ways, we're going to find it, the Y joint right here. There is no slider, which is a bit of a disappointment. I know a lot of people really do enjoy those, and I have used them from time to time, so it's a bit of a disappointment that that's not on these headphones. Right after that is this little box. Now, this is for uh, iTunes and MacBook and Blackberry and iPhone and iPod interface. So this is the button that you're used to, single tap to pause and play, double tap to go forward, triple tap to go back. Now the sad thing about this is this isn't the new model that they shifted to in the shuffle, which has now pretty much become the standard, which is the down volume, the up volume, and then the center button. Pretty much all third-party headphones that are current use this system, and I don't know why Logitech didn't put it in there. I do like, and I think it is unusual, that they did put it further down the headphone. It's usually up right where the mic is, and I do like that it is down lower because when you're running, stuff like that, it's much more convenient to just grab to your side than to go all the way up the cable to find that little box. So I do like how it's down there. However, in the same breath, if you're walking, if you're mowing the lawn, be careful because this very easily does bump when your waist hits against it. It's right at my waistline, so mowing the lawn, this would constantly go on and off. So, eh, it depends what you use it for. Now, as we go further down the line, and this cable is pretty long, we are going to find the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There are the three lines, so that means there is a microphone or data interface. And then you'll see the Ultimate Ears logo with the engraving of either the model number or the serial number, I don't know, but it is uh, C45 on these headphones. So I'm assuming that's the model number, but there you go. The cable itself is pretty high quality. I do like it, but it does have the tendency to cable or to tangle, and I'm gonna get into that in just a second. 
Now, I want to go over the pros and cons of these headphones because you are paying 190 bucks for them. First of all, the pros is the sound. The sound is excellent, and uh, it really is superior for a headphone in this price range, and it's because it creates one of the most realistic, accurate productions of music I've heard in a headphone, in an earphone, furthermore, in a long time. There's a lot of earphones, such as the Beats by Dre Tours or the... This is the best example, the Rockford Fosgate punch plugs that produce a sound that's really fun to listen to, but it's not accurate. If you were to stick it through a $20,000 stereo, that's not what you would hear, which most of the time means a pump and sub or a bump and bass line, and this is pretty well rounded. Now, the bass is excellent. It's not overwhelming, but it's certainly not underwhelming. You get just an ample amount. Uh, furthermore, they are pretty responsive to EQ, so if you're not using an iPod or you're using something with good EQ, such as a Zune or one of the other high-end audio-focused MP3 players or your computer, then you will notice that the EQ does modify these quite a bit. The mids are really smooth and they can be heard, but they're not bland or mushed together, which I really enjoy. They're not crisp though, they're not too powerful, they're not too overwhelming, they just blend in nicely. Um, they're certainly not the feet of these headphones, but they're certainly not the problem. And the trebles are decent, um, and that's all I'm going to give them. I wish there was a little bit more focus on them, they're a little mushy, a little blanded together, um, which is, it depends on your style. It's, I think mushy trebles are way better than really tinny trebles, but it still isn't quite there. So if you listen to a lot of, you know, s soft alternative rock or acoustic stuff, maybe these aren't the best choice. While it does sound good and the bass is absolutely incredible, um, you know, it's just not quite there. Now let's talk about the durability. From what I've experienced, and I've read other reviews online that aren't so grand, but I've these are great. I've been biking with them, I've dropped them on the pavement, uh, I've bumped them against my car, I've actually even slammed them in the car door, and there have been no issues. I mean, they are perfect, they are fine. Uh, people have complained about paint chipping off, I haven't had that issue. People have complained about this separating. Once again, I haven't had any problems. Maybe it's you know, and I've had these for a while. I've had these for a month and a half. So you would figure that if I was going to have a problem, I'd have it now. Um, if I do experience a problem, I'll put an annotation up here so you know what happened to them. But uh, for right now, I haven't experienced any issues whatsoever. I like the button and how it's located lower on the headphones. But once again, like I said earlier, it still can be bumped. And the integrated microphone sounds really pretty good. Is it the best that I've heard? No. But is it certainly better than most headphones? Absolutely. Let's to go to the cons, and unfortunately there are quite a few of them on the Logitech Super 5 5Vis. The ergonomics suck, I'm going to be honest. They fit in your ear this way, but that's about it. If you're going over ear, so if you're working or biking, which I do both of, um, it's kind of a disappointment because if you're running, if you're doing something that has a lot of physical labor, you like to get the cable out of your way and you stick it over your ear. Well, unfortunately, due to this kind of hinge right there, it refuses to sit in my ear. Yours may be different, but it just absolutely refuses to cooperate, so I have to rock them like this, which would be fine, except for there is insane cable noise. Now, if you've ever listened to inner headphones, you know what's going on, and it's even worse with the foam tips. But basically what happens, if you're not listening to music, even the slightest rubbing of this cable against your clothes or anything amplifies into your ear. They're so bad on this headset, it honestly feels like there's a stethoscope in my ear. It's bad. I mean, it, you stick this in your ear, you walk around without music on, and it's just... And that's really annoying, and I really don't like it. And even when it's at low volumes, I mean, you have to pump it up pretty loud to totally get rid or not be able to hear that cable noise. Uh, the ear tips come off way too easily once you've used the headphones for about a month or so. This happens with the foam ones and the silicone ones. Honestly, probably one out of four times I'm listening to these, I yank them right out of my ear and the headphone, this is a bad example, I'm grabbing too hard, but I can use the silicone tips here. I use these for a month and I pull them out of my ear and the silicone tip comes straight uh, or the headphone comes straight out of my ear, but the tip stays in my ear, which I really don't like. You have to put them back on. It's gimmicky. And furthermore, when they're in your pocket and you pull them out of your pocket, these fall off so many times. And these tips, the, especially the foam ones, they're like 20 bucks, uh, not 20 bucks, they're like 10 bucks a set. So that's not something you want to lose, and it's really annoying that it constantly falls off. Uh, the single button control system is really, like, 
I'm sorry to say this, it sounds cheesy, but it's really 2007, 2008. You know, this was cool when the iPhone first came out, but everyone's kind of used the three toggle uh, style lately, and I wish that the 5VIs had that. Now, the price is significantly more than the Super 5 5s, which are exactly the same headphones, but minus the mic and this little control system. I would without a doubt recommend those headphones. These ones I'm pretty wary on. Why? Because there's a $90 price difference. These are $190, and the Super 5 5 VIs are, um, I believe, $110. They may even be $99. So there is a significant price difference. You know, $189, excuse me, I said $199. $189 versus $99 is way way too out of proportion to just add a microphone. So if you're looking for really solid headphones that have a good sound, without a doubt, go with the Super Fi, uh, Fives. Because the Five VIs simply add a microphone and this toggle system, which isn't that great, for a hundred bucks more. Not too good a deal. Unless you use the case provided, uh, these are going to get crazy tangled. I typically unplug the headphones from my device and wrap them up around my hand and then throw them in my pocket. You can't do that with the ultimate ears because you'll be spending tens of minutes, you know, trying to figure th how to untangle them. I don't know why they tangle as easily as they do. I don't know how it tangles as easily as they do, but this is one of the most tangle oriented cables I've ever dealt with. So that's not... Uh, one of the pros at all. So all in all, the sound is great, but I wouldn't get the Super 5 5 VIs. The Super 5 5 is a much better value. Once again, all it's missing is the microphone and it's a full 90 bucks cheaper. So my final rating on the Super 5 5 VI is a six out of 10. I just don't feel the price is justified and there's a few detrimental cons such as cable noise, a button that's really kind of easily bumped and uh, you know, the ergonomics that quite frankly suck. So my final rating, 6 out of 10, not the best headphones out there for the money. They sound great. So if all you're going to do is sit in a chair and listen to them, sure, go ahead and get these. But if you're actively running or you're doing other stuff, these may not be the best choice. And I'd check out some other options. So once again, final rating is 6 out of 10. You can check them out at ultimateears.com. Thank you to Ultimate Ears for sending them for review. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks. Bye-bye.